Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and every website is tracking you, ladies and gentlemen. Now, of course, by the title of this video, that definitely might come across as a not a shock to most people who follow my channel for security, privacy-related stuff. Now, of course, one specific product known as DuckDuckGo, which effectively advertises itself on privacy-focused, was exposed by being friendly with one large tech company. Now, of course, ladies and gentlemen, I want to start this video off by what I mean that you get tracked, okay? Now, of course, on a day-to-day -day basis, everything that we ever do on the internet, every website we go to, every, you know, website we interact with, every website we sign in for, is always tracking us. But even websites we don't want to track us constantly still track us. For instance, you might be like, I don't like Google, okay? All right, I got two fingers up in the air for Google, okay? Hey, I don't like Facebook. I got two fingers up in the air for Facebook, too. Same for Microsoft, same for anything. But even if you don't directly go to that service, like if you don't go to www.facebook.com or Instagram.com, WhatsApp.com, you may think that, hey, Facebook can't track me, but you're wrong. Because regardless of if you go to a website or not, there are still various trackers that exist from various different companies and groups out there that are still monitoring you on websites that you wouldn't believe are actually owned by them. Well, they're not owned by them. They just have trackers that exist on various points of the internet to constantly trace every aspect of you. Now, why is it that somebody wants to track you, for instance? Well, the simple reason is they just want to track you to have the information on you. You are nothing but a data point. One day you evolve to a fingerprint. And once you have a profile of you that's constantly recognized from website to website, you join a giant pool of data that effectively is used to advertise better to you, to track what you're doing, to see what your consumer habits are like. This is why when you think to yourself, hey, I was talking about tacos one day, and all of a sudden your YouTube videos, the entire recommendations may be filled with tacos. You might get advertisements for taco places. To understand how that works, you could go on any other point. You could go on Amazon, for instance, and type that you wanted a specific video game, right? Like Borderlands. And then all of a sudden you go to another site that's not owned by Amazon or maybe YouTube or something, and they'll recognize that, hey, <laughs> you were looking for Borderlands. Here's some ads for you, right? These things might seem creepy at first, but it's not magic. This is what happens when you have cross-site tracking on a daily basis. So to understand how tracking works, we have to think about actual trackers. So trackers come in various shapes and forms. Obviously, some of you know what a cookie is, which is one of the most common ways that anybody can track you. Cookies are effectively tiny pieces of data that's saved onto your browser by actual websites. Every time you go to a website, cookies from that website could be stored on your device. Now, while these cookies are sitting over there tracking and keeping tiny pieces of, uh, you know, stored information on your system, there's also things like super cookies, which basically are devices that are permanently stored on your system out there, okay? These are rougher to detect, and a lot of these contain things like your personal information, things like what your browsing behaviors and your preferences are like. Some of these can also track how much time you are putting on the internet. So, for instance, hey, this person, when you go on the internet, the super cookie might tag you with somebody that browses the internet at like five o'clock, maybe eight o'clock at night. Maybe you come home from work and you're browsing, you know, the internet. This information itself is incredibly important to advertisers or whatnot to know exactly what time to start hitting you. Again, all these things combine together to create a profile of you. Various data points exist to profile you as a person. You know that shit in Watch Dogs where you can profile actual human beings? And while that's a fictional video game, an element of that exists in day-to-day -day life. And one of the things you definitely want to get into is unique identifier device headers, which uh, basically are super cookies injected directly from your ISP provider. Now, if you ever get this, you're basically fucked unless they have an opt-out program. And to be honest with you, all right, even when they get fined in some cases, it's really a $1.35 million fine as evidenced back in 2016 with the FCC and Verizon Wireless. Now, of course, $1.35 million, I don't have to remind you, is like pennies to a company as big as Verizon. But of course, super cookies are something that if you actually care about, trying to remove them can involve different processes for different types of cookies in this situation. And of course, if you if you ever again get those ISP level super cookies, getting rid of them is nearly impossible, okay? Unless you're somehow inside the actual internet service provider, which, you know, there's really no 100% legal way for you to do. So the only way to bypass them is if you get through like a VPN, try to really anonymize your traffic. Again, if you really care about your privacy,
privacy and tracking, you know, you really have to think about not just the websites you go to, but who the fuck you service your internet from anyways. Because chances are, in most cases, they'll absolutely be tracking you as well. If they can, they will do it. What's even more scarier are the little invisible elements on a web page that you go to. Various tracking scripts could exist on these entire situations. Pixel trackers embedded clearly onto these web pages that basically run and capture a lot of your device's specifications. But when it gets really scary is when you elevate to fingerprint scripting. Now, if you don't know fingerprint scripting, effectively they scrape all the data they can from your juicy little web browser. They scrape what type of browser you're using, the exact version of your browser, your device's operating system, Windows, Mac, Linux, BSD, whatever. They check your screen resolution, your CPU, possibly even your GPU, even up to the installed fonts you have on your system. And of course, when you have all these data points, it creates a fingerprint of your browser. See, companies don't have to know if you know, you're browsing it by name. What they can do is if Facebook has your browser fingerprint and it basically knows what resolution of computer, like what resolution your screen is, what the CPU is, how many cores your CPU has, all of these tiny features. If it sees in its own network that all of a sudden that exact same browser fingerprint just showed on a different site, then maybe there's a very good chance that it's the exact same person. They don't have to know you by name. They just have to know you by your fingerprint. And sometimes that tells all. Even if you go, but Muda, I use do not track on my browser. Congratulations, you put a fancy little bow on yourself that said, please don't track me. And that is itself its own little fingerprint. I don't use these features because I'd rather be the absolute normal looking Andy in all the browsing frameworks, in all the fingerprint scripts versus somebody that sets himself super far apart. Now you might be like, oh, Muda, of course everyone spies on me, but what do I do? What am I, what are the options? Listen, like computer security, computer privacy is its own fighting battle, okay? It's really like a, a, a mouse, a cat and mouse little battle you have to do all the time. You have to keep on top of a lot of things if you value your security and privacy. You might be like, but Muda, I got nothing to hide. Well, then why don't you leave your door unlocked? Why don't you leave your car unlocked? Why don't you leave your bathroom unlocked so everyone can look into it? Oh no, no, that's not cool. Okay, well, I, pfft, I guess you got things to hide then, right? Everyone's got a reason to like keep their privacy intact. And in a digital age, your privacy is getting razor thin by the day. The margins between what everybody can see, people who you don't want looking into you are looking into you. So again, if you care at all, all right, about your privacy, this is important. And if you don't care about your privacy, you better start caring about it sooner rather than later. But of course, let's get back to, you might be like, what are the options? Well, up until this point, you know, when it comes to browsing the web, there's always been security focused browsers, but things like DuckDuckGo, which has always been a security or sorry, privacy focused search engine. Now, of course, we all know when you use Google, Google tracks you. Even if you completely hide your browser fingerprint, if you, let's say, have a Google account, which I'm sure some of you watching YouTube definitely have. Well, even if you hide your fingerprint just because you're, ha just because you're signed into your Google account, they'll be able to track exactly what that Google account is searching from time to time. Even if you tell them not to store your search history, you think Google's not at least assessing it on its own first party purpose, maybe sharing it around with some of their inner, inner companies. Of course, it's not just Google that's doing it. It's Microsoft. It's Facebook. It's any large tech company, whether they're from whatever part of the world, the United States, Russia, China, whatever you want to put into every single big tech company is spying on you. So again, DuckDuckGo was sort of one of the search engines that was out there. Search the web without being tracked, trusted by tens of millions worldwide. And I'm sure that number has dropped because there's been a little bit of a drama that's come out of this uh, privacy focused search engine. What kind of drama? Well, it seems like they were really good at blocking trackers from Google, Facebook, except when it came to Microsoft. Now, one of the interesting security researchers known online as Edwards actually was doing a little security audit and they were confident that DuckDuckGo's browsers for the mobile cell phone devices, which might I add you, a lot of people use, actually don't block anything from Microsoft, it seems. Now, I went through and tried this myself using something called PCAP Droid, which basically allows me to analyze the network traffic on my phone. I fired it up, isolated to the DuckDuckGo internet search engine browser, which I used to use on my actual device anyways. And it turns out, yes, by going to sites like workplace.com, this was very able to block a lot of the search engines, except search, except ad results from LinkedIn, from Bing, Microsoft owned services.
So yes, clearly DuckDuckGo has a little bit of a bias. So you know what? I think this is fucking scummy behavior. You can't claim to be privacy focused. Sure, you might block the other big tech companies, but Microsoft's just allowed to check? That's not okay. If you accept this behavior, then you were just lied to and you're actually trying to cope with it. At the end of the day, what happened was DuckDuckGo had agreements with Microsoft. It actually, let's go into it a little bit. For instance, the CEO of DuckDuckGo said, when you load our search results, you are completely anonymous, including ads. For ads, we worked with Microsoft to make ad clicks protected. From our public ads page, Microsoft advertising does not associate your ad click behavior with the user profile. And that's true. They literally tell you that the ads by Microsoft on DuckDuckGo's private search engine do not apparently have Microsoft advertising teams associating your ad clicking behavior with a specific user profile, basically a fingerprint. It also does not store or share that information other than for accounting purposes. So because they had a partnership with Microsoft's ad platform, because of that partnership, they couldn't exclude the Microsoft ad platforms from, you know, being excluded from, from looking at from spying on you effectively for non search tracker blocking example in our browser we block most third party trackers unfortunately our Microsoft search syndication agreement prevents us from doing more to Microsoft owned properties however we have been continually pushing and expecting to be doing more soon so yeah I guess it all just comes down to how much you trust this company now after all of this has come out to make sure that all of that information that's going to Microsoft is not necessarily the same type of information the same type of personal level information that a company like Google or Facebook or any big player in this game would receive right again that's really up to you do you still trust DuckDuckGo I personally do not but then again I don't trust anything that sells itself on privacy explicitly I always like to mix and match my options to counterbalance and uh, uh, basically create privacy my own way the best that I can but we'll get to that in a bit now if you go to their actual core website duckduckgo.com you'll find out very much that they don't actually mention Microsoft if we actually try to look up Microsoft no search phrases have been found but to do a great job shitting on Google and trying to tell you why use DuckDuckGo instead of Google ever notice ads constantly following you around like I told you earlier this in part because Google tracks your searches and hides trackers on millions of websites by contrast, our private search engine doesn't track your searches, and our DuckDuckGo browser extension and mobile app block Google and many other companies' trackers across the internet. You can see on a lot of cases, DuckDuckGo's Android browser, when they tested it through privacytest.org, which are open source tests, if you look at DuckDuckGo for a second and go all the way down to their tracker content blocking, they will block every single person, Adobe, Adobe Audience, Amazon, except for Bing ads, ladies and gentlemen. That, really, in all regards, they did pretty well except for the Microsoft. By comparison, if you were on Android, your best option for secure browsing is quite literally Brave or Bromite, okay? Not DuckDuckGo as they like to advertise. And you know what? Over 10 million people put their belief into all of this, put their, put their hope into it, only to realize that it wasn't as privacy focused as they once thought, surely against everyone, except that small indie company known as Microsoft. Obviously, this stuff drives me insane when we think of things like privacy. But obviously, when you think about how much you're being tracked, Google, for instance, will track you even if you like it or not. In a lot of cases, the Associated Press once did an investigation where they saw that many Google services on Android devices or even iPhones constantly store your location data even if you use those privacy settings that tell Google not to do it. In fact, the tracking is so granular that sometimes it can have benefits when criminals need to be captured. Sometimes instead of, you know, doing it the old fashioned way, law enforcement will turn to Google, will turn to Apple, will turn to companies that will gladly give up some of that location history to help with investigations once subpoenaed. And of course, what should creep you out are the topics of data brokers, entire companies, hundreds of billions of dollars. This is how large the industry is for data brokerage, where people literally create personal information and profiles on you. For instance, they look all the way through your public records, such as the voter registration lists, the census data, all those birth and death certificates, and then they look at non-public records, things like your credit card histories, things like your internet browsing history, things like your video gaming sessions. Of course, these are just a few little data points that they dig up. By combining them, by caching them, they can finally realize that, hey, we can create profiles for every single person out there. Combine a bunch of profiles, and now we can create consumer reports 
reports, we can create consumer scores for all those people and eventually aggregate them to sell to big time advertisers. Your data is not yours anymore. This is why you are a great product. This is why you are worth hundreds of billions of dollars. Collectively, of course, not just as a single person. Now, I don't want to end this video on some doom and gloom, like I'm being tracked. What can I do? I can't trust anyone. You can't trust anyone but yourself in life. And you know what? When it comes to privacy, there's a few things you can do in combination. Now, for instance, I'm going to show you what a browser fingerprint looks like. So we're going to go through EFF's browser fingerprint tool just to see what information my browser is giving away when it's installed in a default fashion. Now, I use Firefox. You could use Chrome, you could use whatever, but we're going to test my browser real quickly through the EFF. And this will show you exactly what my browser has real quick. Now, for instance, what they've identified here in my browser are a few things. They've identified what my browser is, so Mozilla Firefox. Then they've identified my, uh, you know, Linux system right here. They know what I'm using, all right, effectively. Then if we go down, they can identify my time zone offset. They can find out that my time zone is set in America, specifically Toronto. And then we can go even further down over here and we can look at my screen size. I use super ultra wide. They've identified that as 5120 by 1440. Then they'd know that cookies are enabled. They can do a limited super cookie test like we showed you earlier. Then they have a canvas fingerprint and then they have various other fingerprints. And then they're even able to identify WebGL vendors, right? which is, of course, how we use to render 3D graphics. They can even identify that I have no touch points, which means they know that I'm not using a tablet. They know that I'm not using one of those you know, touchscreen-enabled laptops. They know that I'm most likely on an actual desktop. So they don't know what my CPU class is, but they have an idea of my hardware concurrency, which is how many CPU cores I have. I have a 16-thread CPU, which means if a company really wanted to look into it, they could identify roughly what type of CPU I'd be using. Something in the range of a high-end Intel i7 processor, an i9, or an AMD Ryzen 9 processor like I have. Now, that's a lot of information to build a profile off of. Of course, there's ways to harden your browser. Now, of course, you can download better browsers. For instance, I can recommend Firefox. I use this. But you can also get Tor. It's not just for browsing the deep web. You can use it to actually anonymize yourself. And then there's also, you know, uh, browsers like Waterfox. And then, of course, you can always get Iridium browser as well. You have to mix and match which one you're using. But, of course, these are the browsers that are most intended for having some level of security, some level of, um, you know, privacy on the internet. Of course, there's also Brave. I used to use Brave. I switched to Firefox. But from what I understand from the community I've talked to, this is pretty good for privacy focus in general. And if you, I only recommend Brave if you're really into Chrome and you need Chrome, this might be the best Chrome browser for you. Again, there's nothing stopping you from building Chrome from source and working your way through that, okay? Working your way through more privacy focused means if you want to have something completely audited by you. So what is interesting in that entire list is you may have realized that, hey, they were able to identify some pretty specific things on my system. Nothing is stopping you from using multiple things to your sources, right? You can, in fact, use a VPN to mask your IP address so that you're not reported from the country you actually live in. I do this all the time. I set my VPN to the United States because if I'm connecting to a weird website, I don't want them to know I connected from Canada. I want them to know I connected from the United States. It's a simple way to mask. And of course, it comes down to which VPN service you trust. I can't give an answer on that because I would say 95% of VPNs are mostly unreliable. You really have to find one whose laws don't have to conform to giving up data to like big companies, big governments, and some that are actually placed in areas that, uh, you know, don't have to even store your data on hard drives for caches. They have all the reins to be completely privacy and security proof. Now to get the utmost privacy, you gotta learn to combine a lot of tools. It's not just having a specific browser. For instance, I'm somebody that also virtualizes my browsing sessions. I know I talk about VMs all the time, but there are operating systems designed for user security. For instance, you could use something known as Cubes OS, which literally virtualizes everything underneath. You're actually installing a hypervisor and you're virtualizing all of your sessions underneath Cubes. Very secure, probably the most secure operating system out there. There's also Wanix, which is what I use within a VirtualBox session to give me privacy. 
You can also get Tails, or you can just get any generic distribution. Hell, you could even use something like Windows or Mac if you really wanted to, just contained within a virtual environment. Now, of course, when you contain it within a virtual environment, you can then use a VPN to mask where you're sending your information from. Now, I would say that 90% of VPN services are services I don't trust, but unless you're buying a VPN, make sure that it's stored in a country that doesn't have to track your, that doesn't have to store your information for a period of six months, one that isn't talking with a five or 11 eyes member, like basically the United States, Canada, the United Kingdom, Australia, these countries which constantly share their data in amongst each other. As long as your VPN is operating from any of those places where uh, they don't have to store your data and basically they're also running your sessions in RAM so that as soon as you're done, they just wipe that system, you know, kill the power and wipe the RAM right there and then. That would be the only service. And you really have to do your research with a VPN, depending on what you get. And then once you're done with those two steps, you can then harden your browser. So in this session, I've got Manjaro basically ready to go. Now I've got Firefox, and what I'm going to do is show you how to harden the session so that you can have a much more secure version of Firefox next time you go on. And of course, there's other ways for you to make multiple browsers more reasonably secure. There are websites known as privacytools.io. This is a great website for people who want to fight against the surveillance that's happening to them on a daily basis. They give you tons of alternatives, but they even tell you, hey, if you don't want to use Firefox, you can learn how to do this for Brave, Android, iOS, or even DuckDuckGo if you feel like it after hearing what you did. Now, of course, what we're going to do is we're going to highlight the Firefox session and we're going to go and follow the guide on how to make our system much more secure. Now within ffprofile.com, what you want to do is you want to do private browsing only. And of course, hit start, and then you follow through a bunch of situations here. For instance, you can disable uh, DOM, which are super cookies, right? Some modern sites will not work, so you could disable that. You could even disable index DB. And of course, there's descriptions that tell you exactly what this stuff is. Disable the disk caching, which I actually do recommend. And you can actually enable resist fingerprinting, but you do have to do a few other things to make this work properly. Of course, you can do save and next. And then what it'll do is it'll tell you to download a specific profile set and I'll show you to install that. So you download this profile.zip and then you follow the simple instructions right here. So type about support into the URL bar. So you do that, open a new one, and then all of a sudden, whoa, Muda, what is all this? Don't freak out, don't freak out. Go all the way to the top. You see where it says profile directory? Just hit open directory, and all of a sudden you should open a window right here. Now here you want to uh, close Firefox, so close it. And then you wanna to go to your downloads folder where you have that profile.zip done. Now over here in that folder you just opened, it'll be titled something default-release. Highlight everything and just shift, delete it all. You might be like, oh, we'll just delete it, wipe it, go to the downloads, open that profile.zip, like so, open that up. Yeah, right here, baby. And then copy that into this folder where you just deleted everything. So once you do that, all you have to do is hit Firefox yet again, and now you'll start to see things slowly fill up. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Firefox should, in theory, start in private browsing mode. Now, for instance, if I type in some ordinary gamers into the browser here, you're going to notice, hey, look at my channel. Now, of course, you can see this browser which does not even store history at all. This browser is not doing anything to basically keep any of my fingerprint intact. Now, of course, ladies and gentlemen, when I go into this and let's do that browser fingerprint again and see just what's changed. Oh, look at that. I have strong protection. Really? Now, of course, they can identify just what operating system I'm using. A virtual machine comes in handy because you can just set this to Windows 10. You can run a Windows 10 system and just look like you're part of the rest of the crowd, right? You don't have to like put the Linux there to make yourself look like the 1% of desktop users that use this system. Of course, then we go down even further. They're trying to look for my browser plugin details. And then of course, they can identify my time zone aspect. But of course, it's 420. I actually changed my time zone to I think like Phoenix, Arizona to further hide myself right here. Then of course, they can check my screen size set your virtual machine to run at 1080p so you look like the average person out there. Here you can see they're checking my system font, right? Again, if you just never install a font onto your virtual machine, you look like every other default Windows person out there. They can see that I cannot store <laughs> the local super cookies, not happening. And then of course, the more you go down into this situation, you can then actually see that yes, while they can identify, you know, like languages, they do know that I don't have any form of touch support, of course. 
But of course, ladies and gentlemen, down over here, you can see that I've got one CPU that I've given one thread to this virtual machine. If you have a VM and you have the space to do it, you can give it like four to make it look just like a normal laptop out there in the world, four or eight, I believe. Of course, it's really up to you for how you cover your tracks on browser fingerprinting. But of course, through a combination of VPNs, virtual machines, and hardened browsers, you too can achieve simple, easy privacy so that you don't have to worry if the service you trust to not spy on you is actually spying on you. Because once you follow these steps, chances are you're going to look like the average person out there, and you don't have to worry about getting spied in that regard. If you're talking about what you're doing on your Google account signed in, I can't help you right there, okay? You're basically opening a fucking portal to being scanned. But if you're somebody that tries to focus on privacy in the general browsing sense, this might be a smart way to do it, okay? Browsing the internet can be a spooky, daunting, and privacy-busting place, but with a few simple steps, you too can make yourself look pretty reasonably secure out in the world. And of course, even if you have nothing to hide, you still shouldn't let somebody peek into you no matter what, okay? Just easy willy-nilly. That said, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike if you dislike it. I am out.